first of all, website. Um, I'm Ian Harvey, I'm from Cardiff University, um, working on a project called uh, Lost Visions, that's a much, much longer title. Um, that is the um, title of the project, AHRC funded uh, project with uh, Cardiff University, and uh, obviously with help from the British Library. <coughs> you know this, I know this, everybody knows this, uh, these are the books, that's the rough um, range uh, from what we can see from the metadata of um, where the books are from. That's the earliest book. That's the latest book that we can see from the metadata. Um, we're specifically interested in 18th and 19th century, but obviously there's a much wider range in there. Um, we want to, aim the project, make all of these images searchable. So find out what is in these images. Um, and that means something different to different people. Some people are looking for specifically what the image is. So this is an advertisement. Some people want to know specific people. Some people want to know specific countries, regions, cultures, etc. So quick blast through, because we were trying to work out how do we even begin to create the categories for the images so that we can then ask people to put the images into categories. And so different people see different things. <coughs> and these are the, the approximate um, categories. that we, we went through a number of iterations to uh, see how to even begin to put these into some sort of order. And we know that these are in there. We know that they're, they're well represented in different ways. Um, but we want to create a, primarily a research tool, really, that is going to be useful for people. So yep, these are um, definitely things that we found in there. And we were going through saying, you know, do we want different categories and different things um, so that people can find them? And then there's aspects of these images that are not just what's in the image or where was the image printed, but also how was the image created. And so these are more examples of these different things that is more important to different types of people. So in terms of our, um, there's ongoing research at Cardiff University that's actually already using um, the information that we're receiving. There's uh, one group of people that are uh, trying to discover women in trousers. And it turned out that that could be discovered from the, the website that I'll demonstrate in a bit. Um, so, yeah, not something that you probably think of immediately when you think of, you know, what am I going to do with this set of images, find all the women in trousers. But that is something that's come up. There's another person, another guy, uh, Michael Goodman, who's looking um, specifically for Shakespeare-related images. Other people have sort of project <coughs> titles, Indian Mutiny, and want to find uh, images that can illustrate these things. Um, and we've got sort of beginnings of uh, conversations with uh, sort of other parties that are uh, you know, specifically trying to find birds in there. Another guy um, you know, made himself aw well, aware that he had bought from eBay or something um, <coughs> a sketch, and we had a linkage to the original image. So we're creating these metadata linkages between um, you know, other external sources of images as well. So um, from a computer science point of view, that's my, one of my hats, um, it's a big data problem. There's loads of data out there. Um, we've got all the page scans. There's, what, 25 <laughs> terabytes of the page scans. We've got all the images. I put this in there purely because getting the images from the British Library to Cardiff University was a mission in itself. How do you move 25 terabytes of data up the M4? Turns out you send a hard disk, and they send a hard disk, and then you've got <laughs> And yeah, storing it, storing it is expensive. Um, processing the data is expensive. We've got a huge HPC uh, unit, high performance computing unit at Cardiff University, currently offline. Um, it's going through an upgrade process. So the website I'll show you in a minute will be a little bit slow because of that. Um, but yeah, you know, the resources required and the time and the effort just to deal with the amount of data that's out there is, is um, significant. So what, what's in the images? How can we start to find out what's in there? Um, Bristol Library gave us this metadata, which is great. Um, it's primarily about the book. For each image, the only thing we really knew was what page it was from. And the only thing that we really know for sure is that that's not the page it's from. <laughs> <laughs> because page zero is the front cover, which is not how you name, uh, you know, number pages in books. But you know, it's, it's something to work with, and it's, it's all we had at the time. So that's uh, the starting point. And as I've said before, different people want to search things in different ways. Um, so I wanted to create a tool that allowed people to search uh, things in different ways. Some people want to do quite vague searches. Some people want to do very specific searches. And 
some people just want to see what's there and then move through the images in sort of serendipitous type, well, that's quite interesting, oh, that's quite interesting sort of way. So the tool that I'll show you, it's got author, it's got title, it's got publisher, all the metadata that was provided to us. But we've also got uh, searching for keywords. So <coughs> it's essentially uh, tagging similar to the, the, uh, the tags that are going up on Flickr, but we're trying to be a bit smarter with it. So how do we provide that? <coughs> As I say, we've got a crowdsourcing element to our site. We're also going to be linking to the, um, well, using the uh, tags that Ben's provided from the, the Flickr things as well. And uh, just to find out what different people see in an image, because obviously an expert will see one thing and they'll tag it with one thing, and a more layman person <coughs> will tag it as something else. It's either a cat or it's a lithograph. You know, it depends on the terminology. So, and at, at the moment, all of the tagging uh, through our site has been done almost exclusively by my parents and my granddad. So, they are not <laughs> experts at all. By the way, family members are really great alpha testers. They don't hold back when, they, when something breaks. It's not working. Yeah, fix it. Yeah. So, what questions do you ask them? How do you word it in a way that isn't going to be really alienating to people? How do you word it in a way that allows the experts to get their information across as well? And then, basically, um, again with the computer science hat on, how do we use uh, this machine learning? We've got this high performance computing unit. Um, the only way that we can po properly churn through a million images is using massively distributed resources, huge um, yeah, processing power, because people can't do a million things very quickly. But, yeah. So the idea is that there is, I'm building a feedback loop between what humans are good at and what computers are good at. Computers can do stupid things very quickly. Humans can do more intelligent things in terms of telling you information about an image with an expert head on, but they're very slow at doing these things. So I get all this information, stick it into the same database, and run this machine work learning workflow once a week, once a month, whenever there's enough new information going in, to take information that we know about these images that have been recorded from the crowdsourcing, try and find similarities between all of the images in there, then go back to the crowdsourcing and ask them if the machine learning got it right. So there's a feedback loop, is the idea, of get the humans to train the machine, get the machine to make some guesswork, um, well, as intelligent as I can make it, and then check it back again um, with, the, with the crowdsourcing elements. And hopefully that feedback loop will be productive. So, as I basically mentioned before, humans, pretty slow, but there's a common sense, there's a natural instinct that object recognition in the human brain is brilliant compared to a machine. A, a three-year-old can do significantly more than the entire power that Google has as its resources, for example. But, yeah, machines are much, much faster. So, good, the bad, and the ugly in terms of my um, image recognition at the moment. That, believe it or not, is actually quite a good hit. All of these lines means that there's some element, I won't go into what the features are that are being compared to that, but there's a lot of them. And that's this here is a map, that there is a map. There's lots and lots of connections between them, so I'm going to say, yes, good hit. Whatever that is, that is something similar. If somebody tags this as being a map, there's a fair chance that that might be a map as well. That's the sort of information I'm going for. Once I've got a vague idea that that might be similar to this, I can go back to the user and say, we think this is a map. Can you confirm that for us, please? So that's pretty good. The bad, <laughs> as Ben hinted at before, this guy's rather magnificent beard gets in the way of um, the machine <laughs> learning aspect, and apparently it's quite similar to a kestrel. <laughs> but, but the eyes, there's a link there. So maybe I've written an eye recognition piece of software. Who knows? That's definitely one I need to look further into. But there's things like signatures at the bottom that are not going to link nicely to anything that isn't a signature. And the ugly, I don't even know what this is. <laughs> and the, you know, there's printed text that somehow matches with a scrawled signature. Again, there's some sort of weird linkage between eyes. I don't really know what's happening there. But I'm just trying to get across the sort of challenges that we're trying to face um, by you know, doing these processes. 
But we can show that to a user and say, is there something similar between these? And you're going to get all sorts of weird answers as well. Yes, they're both men, sort of, but I don't, yeah. <laughs> so there's a small dig at the um, humanities department. Um, just the challenges of being a computer scientist, and you're given this challenge by uh, the humanities to say, here's all the images. Tell us what's in them. And yeah, I can sort of do that with enough resources for a million years. But uh, this is XKCD, it's a fairly well known webcomic. But um, yeah, so I don't know if I've got any time left, but yeah. I'd like to show you the website. Um, <coughs> this is now in version 1.1, to give it a number. Um, that's the, the home page. The tagging, if you do basically that, it will select a random image for you. And because our HPC resources are down right now, this site will be slightly slow, but in a week's time it should be back up and uh, <laughs> we can start doing it. I'm not going to wait for that. These are the images. <coughs> so as I say, we've got these types of illustration um, that we ask people to click on. And we're, uh, we're asking them different questions. With, this is a building, so you can say, yes, that's a building. Can you tell us what the building is? Uh, no, whatever. And then you go through and next. And then we're being asked, um, can you tag the individual objects and ideas? So that is something um, very similar to the, the way the Flickr works. Um, in terms of the, the tag itself, I'm doing something a little bit smarter in the background. Um, basically, putting that, the word that's typed into there into WordNet, which is a, effectively a thesaurus. Find words that mean the same thing as that. So if somebody puts house, it will be tagged as building. It will be tagged as structure. It will be tagged as construction. And so later on, when somebody does a search, <coughs> you can search for structures and it will bring back pictures of houses, is the plan. We then ask for <laughs> captions, if there's captions in there, and um, a description. So that's the opportunity in there for your expert user to say, I know all about this image. I know who drew it, I know who etched it, I know, you know where it was based, I, don't, I know when it was based. Um, that, that's the sort of free-for-all box that will then have to be sort of monitored and read over by a human. Um, but again, I, I can do some text analysis on what goes into that box. Obviously, giving a user a free-for-all, they're also going to be telling you things like, I went there on my holiday. But yeah, that's the challenge of dealing with um, real users. <laughs> um, there's a couple of other um, tools built into this, um, the idea of Sorry about this, it's going to be in version two. It will look much nicer. <laughs> At the moment, this is just features on a page. But uh, you can create collections of images. You can name your collections. You can download your images. You can tweet the collections that you've personally made, um, is the idea there. So um, one final page just to show you the <coughs> current progress. Here is a cloud of all the tags that people have put in so far. And the size of the tag will tell you um, how many times different images within the set have been tagged with that. So we've got lots of buildings, um, lots of landscapes there. What's that? Men. Because, yeah. Scientific drawing. See, that is not something that somebody's typed in. That's something that I've added because it's a linkage between other words that will help with the, the searchability of these things afterwards. And, uh, yeah, total number of um, images tagged at the moment. 1,700, that will go up considerably when I import the, the uh, mess data that Ben's made available. Um, <coughs> but this is the thing that we've got 19,000 tags for those you know, 1,700 images because we're doing this sort of intelligent thing in the background of um, trying to produce tags from things other than what people have typed in. So I'll finish with the Advanced search, this is um, effectively a metadata search at the moment, um, but the keywords will also be searching for all the tags. And I'd be very happy if everybody can go away, at least try to sign up to the site, maybe tag some things, that would be excellent. And I'll stop there. Thank you for listening. <coughs>